Gretchen Whitmer. Welcome all. To begin today's program, please welcome Jonathan Gold from Giffords Gun Owners for Safety. Good morning. My name is Jonathan Gold and I'm the president of the Michigan chapter of Giffords Gun Owners for Safety. I'm a gun owner, I'm a firearms instructor, and a concealed carry permit holder. I'm a passionate supporter of the Second Amendment. I'm also a survivor of gun violence and believe that we can take reasonable steps to save lives in Michigan from gun violence. The vast majority of gun owners support common sense safety laws, such as background checks for every gun sale, requiring secure firearm storage to protect children and prevent suicide, and extreme risk protection orders which keep guns out of the hands of those who may want to harm themselves or others. Giffords just conducted a poll in Michigan where background checks for all gun sales received an 89% approval rate. Requiring gun owners to store their firearms safely had an 88% approval rate and extreme risk protection orders had a 75% approval rate. One thing is abundantly clear, the people of Michigan want action. It is my honor today to be surrounded by gun safety champions. I am surrounded by advocates, students, elected leaders, and survivors. Too many survivors not just on these steps, but in this incredible group of people in front of me today. Being among so many people working hard to make Michigan safer is an honor. Thank you. Today, we celebrate the progress we've made to keep our children, our students, and ourselves safer today than they were yesterday. Today, we're ready to take action to keep our families safe. This journey is only possible because our state has a leader committed to keeping the people of Michigan safe. We have a leader who listens to the people and knows that action is necessary. We have a leader who has given us hope for a safer future. Now it's my honor and privilege to introduce the governor of the great state of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. Thank you, everyone.
everybody, the gloves are off. Yeah. Literally. All right. I want to thank Gabby Giffords, our former, a former congresswoman, gun violence survivor, and fighter for common sense reform. Let's thank her. I want to thank students and parents and members of communities across our state who are passionate about this issue and committed to getting something done. Thank you for making your voices heard and pushing for concrete action. Now is the time. In this country, we have gone through the gruesome exercise of lifting off place, listing off places where people have been killed by gun violence. We have seen too many times what can happen when someone opens fire in a place that's supposed to be about community, togetherness, or learning. We've seen gun violence every day in communities across Michigan and across the country where criminals have an easy time getting their hands on guns and perpetuate cycles of violence and endanger our communities. In the most ordinary circumstances, we see extraordinary violence. This is a uniquely American problem. And Michigan knows this pain too. Gun violence is the leading cause of death in this country and only in this country, and we have experienced it too frequently. A little over a year ago, we saw a mass shooting in Oxford, Michigan, where four students were killed and another community was changed forever. We saw another just a few weeks ago on Michigan State University's campus, where we lost three incredible Michiganders. We have faced a lot of challenges over the four years, but the days after those shootings were without question the very heaviest and hardest. Because what can you say to a parent who's lost a child to gun violence? What can you say to a young people who are terrorized and terrified just to go to school? The good news is we do not have to live like this and we will not live like this anymore. That's why we are here today. Of course, we can and we will take action. We know that every person has the right and the freedom, the right of freedom to feel safe in their place of worship, in their place of education, in their neighborhood, in their workplace, in their community. That is a freedom we must fight for. And we are here to honor those who lost their lives by taking action. We must work together to reduce gun violence and save lives. Michiganders agree. It is why the vast majority of us want common sense gun reform. Now there are three immediate priorities we are focused on. Universal background checks, safe, safe storage and extreme risk protection orders. These are efforts to keep guns out of the hands of criminals and domestic abusers and those who pose a danger to themselves or others. And finally, the good news, we are making progress long overdue. So the gun violence prevention majority in the Michigan legislature, the folks in the building behind me, recently passed bill requiring background checks for all firearm purchases. Right now, only some guns require a background check, but long guns and shotguns don't. That doesn't make sense, right? That's why I cannot wait to sign that bill into law so that we have a universal program. And soon the legislature will be passing safe storage laws. This is what the families of Oxford have been telling us they want. We're going to get it done. And the legislature will also pass bills on extreme risk protection orders so that law enforcement, friends, or family can petition a court to temporarily suspend a person's access. These are three common sense things that we can do to stop gun violence. They have broad bipartisan support and they are supported by responsible gun owners who want to keep their communities safe. Let's hear it for them.
Of course, we must continue our work to ensure that communities have resources and tools that they need to reduce gun violence, including community violence protection programs and intervention programs so we can tackle the root causes of gun violence. It includes training and support for our law enforcement so they can do their jobs, and includes campus safety and mental health resources so our kids can learn when they're in school and not be afraid every minute that they're there. So, with a productive, focused majority who's not going to get distracted by noise, we are taking action. We are done only offering thoughts and prayers. It is time for action. And that's why I'm so grateful to you and to the people of Oxford and all the communities around Oxford, the kids and the students and the teachers and all the people at Michigan State and our loved ones. Thank you for voting, for making this possible. And thank you to Gabby Giffords, who is spending her life fighting to make sure that the horrific scene she had to live through doesn't happen to others. Well, I am proud to be here with all of you, and I thank you. Let's get it done. Please give a warm welcome to No Future Without Today's Maddie Johnson. Hello everyone and good morning. My name is Madeline Johnson and I'm the co-vice president of No Future Without Today. We are a student-led organization composed mostly of survivors of the Oxford High School shooting and I am a survivor myself. On November 30th, 2021, I was walking down the hallway with my best friend, Madison. We were heading towards her next classroom, but passing time was nearly over. Not wanting to be late, I said goodbye to her and turned back the other way. I still remember her smiling and waving at me as she turned the corner, unknowingly walking directly into the path of the shooter. That was the last time I ever saw her alive. I'm now speaking directly to any individuals in office who oppose gun sense safety legislation. Tate, Hannah, Justin, Madison, Brian, Ariel, and Alexandria deserved to live. I want you all to remember their names and their faces and their stories. I want you to know that your ignorance has failed them and your selfishness has cost them their lives. I urge the Michigan legislature to pass the package of bills that has been recently introduced. Extreme risk protection orders, universal background checks, and safe storage laws have been proven to prevent violence in other states. These are vital pieces of legislation, and passing them is a great start to ending this epidemic. And better yet, believe it or not, none of these bills are an infringement of the Second Amendment, despite what a lot of people think. children, we were always taught that if we wanted something, we had to ask nicely. But I was a child when I ran from bullets. I was a child when I attended my best friend's funeral. My childhood was ripped away from me, and I'm tired of begging you to care. So today, I'm not asking you to do your job. I'm demanding it. Since the death of school children isn't enough of a reason for you to do the right thing, then how about this? See the crowd of people in front of me. We are your current and future voters, and you sure as hell will lose your spot in office if you keep showing us that our lives mean nothing to you. Yeah. To all of the students, parents, siblings, advocates, and voters in front of me, I know you're frustrated. I know you're angry and scared and tired, but we cannot give up. We will gather on these steps for as, long, for as long as it takes for those in opposition to hear us. Now, who is ready to fight with me? Please welcome the Michigan Speaker of the House, Joe Tate. Good morning, everyone. Hey. 
The disturbing rise of mass shootings and the all too high levels of gun violence across the state means that we must do more to protect our families from gun violence. I'm proud to stand here today to tell you that we will pass life-saving gun safety policies this year. We know that these policies work. Americans are 25 times more likely to die from gun violence than people in other industrialized countries, but states that have passed stronger gun laws have seen significant reductions in gun deaths and gun violence. We know that Michiganders overwhelmingly support these policies. The threat of gun violence has been an unbearable fact of life for too many Michigan families. As legislators, it is our responsibility to propose and advance reasonable solutions to help reduce gun violence. The people we represent have the right to feel safe at school, in places of worship, and in everyday life of their communities. Michiganders believe this. They believe in the right to protect oneself and one's family, but with freedom comes responsibility, just as it does with freedom of speech and freedom of the press. Responsibility means requiring a background check on every gun sale or transfer so that we can help stop illegal, illegal guns in sales. Responsibility means safely storing guns to keep them away from children. Responsibility means temporarily preventing someone in crisis from having easy access to firearms. We can and will do all of these things in Michigan this year to protect our communities. So to the millions of Michiganders demanding the passage of common sense gun policies, we hear you and we are going to get this done. Thank you for being here today. And now, from Spartans Against Gun Violence, Joseph Kesto. Hello, my name is Joseph Kesto. I'm a sophomore at Michigan State University and a board member of March for Our Lives MSU chapter. A month ago I grieved, but today I'm tired and angry and demand change from legislation. In the past month, I have written exactly nine speeches each with a different message and goal composed of a total of 5,789 words. As time progresses, these words have become lost and forgotten, and the rest of the world resumes back to normal while my community deals with the trauma and hurt every single day. Today, I wanted to imprint these words into your minds through the concept of the American dream. My parents immigrated to the United States in the early 2000s from Iraq, hoping to provide their family out with a life free of worries about their safety. To them, this was their American dream, a dream of life away from the constant worry that at any moment, their lives would be taken away as a cause of violence. On February 13th, 2023, at exactly 8.13 p.m., that dream was stolen and shattered into pieces when I, their eldest son, was trapped in a lockdown zone on campus due to an active shooter. From 8.13 until 12.27 a.m., families and friends waited to hear from their loved ones. We texted our loved ones one last I love you and asked our friends if they were okay when we were really asking, are you still alive? But many of us remained with no answers and were unheard. What we did hear that night was screams, fear, running, death, sirens, gunshots, and hurt all wrapped into one breaking hearts and shattering dreams. Today, I stand here as a representation of a broken American dream shattered into pieces, a piece where Alexandra Werner, Ariel Anderson, and Brian Frazier are not here today. Another piece where even just standing here, I fear for my life and safety. Another piece where we plan where to sit in class because we fear that it will happen again and we'll need an emergency escape plan. Another where I had to organize a vigil for my friends and classmates a week following their death. 
My American dream is not one that involves being scared to be on campus, nor does it leave me wondering in every class period if I will be able to make it to the next. I am no longer asking, I am demanding a safer future for myself, my three younger brothers, my classmates, and my community. Legislation has continuously failed us since the Columbine High School shooting in 1999. Here we are still fighting for the same battle almost 24 years later, a battle that began before I was even born. Our government constantly and repeatedly fails us and I'm sick of it. Legislation and power holders imprint these words into your minds. The blood is on your hands. You shattered the hopes and dreams of the American people, the people who it's your very job to protect. Do better and protect us. Give us the safety and protection the American dream promises. Prevent events like the one that happened 10 minutes away from here from ever happening again. These shattered pieces of the American dream have formed a new one for me, one where I can live without fear and where gun violence is no longer a daily reality. A dream of resilience, courage, and determination as I fight for a better future for our community. We have to take matters into our own hands. Young people refuse to die waiting for change. We will continue to fight for our lives and we intend to win. If not, we will vote you guys out of office. Now do me a favor. Open your messages on your phone and text ACT, A-C-T, to 954-954. We demand change. Rest in power, Alexandria, Ariel, and Brian, my friends and classmates. Please give a warm welcome to Michigan Senate Leader, Winnie Brinks. Thank you, and good morning. We are so glad to have Gabby Giffords and all of the brilliant organizers, advocates, volunteers with Giffords Law Center, Brady and Everytown, and all of you uniting for one purpose, to say enough is enough. I'm Winnie Brinks, and I'm the Senate Majority Leader, and let me tell you, I am right there with you, and I am mad. I'm mad at the inaction. I'm mad for all the other moms and dads of Spartans who, like me, spent the evening of February 13th texting with their kids, absolutely sick with dread. We've had enough. On behalf of the families with an empty seat at the dinner table, I've had enough. On behalf of the young people, like my three kids and a whole generation of their peers who have grown up in a time where mass shootings have become so prevalent that it seems like a matter of when and not if, and I have had enough. I'm really, really had enough of the leaders who had this job before me, yet refused to take action to protect our kids. For too long, the people who had my job leading this legislature were not willing to do anything about gun violence. They said that if we passed these laws, we would become a state, no, they said we would become a country we don't recognize anymore. And that's interesting to me because they don't seem to have a problem accepting the reality that we have become a country that willfully accepts the death of children and innocent people as a daily occurrence, like it's just another news article. But a few things are different between then and now. Now we can finally do something productive with our anger and our frustration and our pain because now the majority of lawmakers serving in this legislature are willing to finally do something about gun violence. It's a new day in Lansing. 11 of our first 100 bills introduced this session are researched and proven measures to reduce gun violence on campuses, in communities, and in homes. They include universal background checks to make sure that no one who shouldn't be able to access a gun can actually buy one. That is just common sense. Safe storage bills to keep weapons secured and out of the hands of children. 
and extreme risk protection orders so that when someone is a threat to themselves or others, law enforcement can take action to keep firearms out of the equation. I am happy to report that these measures have been voted out of committee and are progressing through the legislative process right now. We were all touched by the shootings at MSU and before that at Oxford High School. And I'm guessing that for many of you here, those terrible situations were, were not the only instances of gun violence that you've been affected by in your family, at your school, or in your community. Suicide, domestic violence, homicide, accidents at home. We want to address gun violence in all its ugly forms, and we will. I also know that one bill, or even 11 bills, is not going to be the entire solution. While the opposition will use that as an excuse to do nothing, we are using that as fuel to start taking steps right now. We know that if these bills prevent one traumatic situation or save one life, it will be worth it. And research shows we can and will save a lot more than one life with these bills. So I want to close with this. I want you to know you are heard. Your concerns and fears are valid. And the new leaders in your state legislature now share them. And if you're skeptical, I don't blame you. How many times have we witnessed a horrific tragedy only to be met with silence from those with the power to do something about it? Far too many. This new majority knows that this is some of the most important work that we will do in our time serving in this legislature. And my pledge to you is that we are going to get these bills done. We are going to get Governor Whitmer's desk, and we are going to continue to seek and implement solutions to make Michigan safer for you and the next generation. So thank you. Thank you for giving your time and energy to this mission. Together, we will make Michigan a safer place. So let's get it done. Please welcome to the podium, from Moms Demand Action and the Charles W. Reed Community Help Center, Mia Reed, and from Students Demand Action, Sailor Rinders. We have heard the cries of parents whose children have been murdered due to gun violence yell and scream louder than anybody else out here. All eyes on me. First, I would like to say thank you to our legislators for taking swift action on gun safety legislation. Like universal background checks, secure storage, and extreme risk protections. The two devastating mass shootings in our state, in Oxford and East Lansing, left many families looking for change now. And legislators, you did not wait. You kept your promise. Thank you. Passing these bills will be a win for all Michiganders, for every city in Michigan. That includes Saginaw, Flint, Grand Rapids, and Detroit. That includes all 83 counties in Michigan, from the lowest income to the highest. Nobody, you hear me? Nobody, you hear me? Yes. Nobody is immune to gun violence. Yes. 
We know, we know there's more work to be done. We know the work that needs to be done right in the heart of our communities. We know this. We know that the impact of gun violence doesn't go away with the funerals. Mm -mm. Families live with that grief and loss forever. I know I'm a mental health therapist licensed. I also know because on June the 26th, 2011, my firstborn child, my son, my baby, are you listening to us, our babies? Our babies, we carry for nine months. I didn't just have my son for 24 years, I had him for 24 years and nine months. Are you hearing us? I can relate with so many families in sharing that the loss of a child is not the natural order of life. Listen to me. It is so difficult because it is not the natural order of life. We are not supposed to be burying our children. There is no description. I can tell you it is just unimaginable and life changing. And I will never be the same. Those wounded and survived gun violence will never be the same. Those children that huddle in those classrooms wondering if they will be shot to death will never be the same. And yet, we stand here today, all of us, because we will keep going, and we will keep demanding action. We will not stop until we feel, until we feel safe in our communities, in our bedrooms, driving, walking, grocery store, church, middle school, high school, and even college. Our children should not be marching for their lives. They should be living their lives. And we want a future with them. We all deserve to be safe. Tell yourself that right now. We all deserve to be safe. Tell yourself that right now. We all deserve to feel safe. The time is now for us to inspire hope because it's a lot of parents out there whose children have been taken due to gun violence and those murders have not been solved. We have to help them and inspire hope and motivate change. Let's support our legislators that are doing the work. So I'm asking each and every one of you this is my call to action to you today. Join us. We can end gun violence together. Thank you. My name is Sailor Reinders, and I'm the president of the Michigan State University chapter of Students Demand Action. 
Thank you all for being here today, and thank you to our friends at Giffords for giving me the opportunity to speak before you. I want to start by taking a moment to honor the lives of the three Spartans who were killed in the shooting on February 13th. Brian Fraser, Ariel Anderson, and Alexandria Werner. As we stand here today, we hold them in our hearts along with their loved ones and the five other students who were shot and wounded that night. This tragedy should never have happened. And while we can never take away that hurt, we can and will honor them with action every single day. Yeah. It's been just over a month since the shooting, Classes have resumed, the news has quieted down, but for the students who lived through it, it feels like it was just yesterday. For those of us who survived that night, we spent a month reliving it. We're still on edge, ready to run for cover. Every loud noise still sounds like a gunshot. Even as we've worked tirelessly over the past month urging lawmakers to address this crisis, we've still been hurting. I didn't think this could ever happen at MSU, but when the shots rang out and I watched my fellow students spring into action, I realize that we've been preparing for a nightmare like this one our entire lives. Our generation has been forced to grow up living in fear of the next shooting. We practiced how to stay quiet and out of sight, rehearsed how to run, hide, and fight. As a country, we've accepted that this is the reality of being young in America. Shootings on campus, traumatized students, vigils instead of classes. And it's not just school shootings. Gun violence in all its forms impacts young people around the country every single day. Guns are the leading cause of death for children, teens, and college-age Americans who should have a right to a life free from the constant fear of being shot. But this isn't the way things have to be. I refuse to let future generations of students grow up like we have, living in constant worry that any day could be their last. Right now, Michigan has a real opportunity to make meaningful change for generations of students to come. Thanks to the tireless work of gun safety advocates, voters, and young people, the political landscape has shifted. We've secured a gun sense trifecta in the House, Senate, and the Governor's Mansion that has the power, yes, that has the power and momentum to create lasting change. Voters have done our jobs, and now lawmakers must do theirs. As the weeks since the shooting have shown us, so much can be accomplished in a month, but only if we act. In the wake of the shooting, state lawmakers moved quickly to introduce a package of foundational gun safety bills. These bills are moving quickly through both chambers, and now we must get them across the finish line and onto Governor Whitmer's desk. Yeah. There is no more time to waste. We know the cost of inaction, and we can't afford to pay it. This time must be different. Yeah. And now, from Michigan's 7th Congressional District, Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin. Hi, everybody. Hello. On um, February 13th, I became the first Congresswoman in the entire House of Representatives to have represented two school shootings. Oxford, Michigan, and Michigan State University. And in Oxford, where are my Oxford people, by the way? Let's hear, thank you. Um, after the shooting at Oxford, I felt that deep sadness, that inability to control emotion as we went to funeral and vigil and memorial. But when Michigan State University happened, I skipped past that initial part and went straight to fury. And I still am so angry because when people say they care about children and then refuse to take action on gun violence legislation, it's BS. Because when people come to our school boards and plead and beg for changes in our schools, but they won't talk about protecting children in those very schools, it's BS. When I grow up with guns, as I did, when I grew up doing three tours in Iraq carrying a Glock and an M4, and someone tells me you either care about carrying guns or you care about gun safety, it's BS. Yeah. 
When they tell you it's impossible to protect our children from people who have mental illness, yet we have none of these shootings in places like Europe that are just like that, it's BS. And when, when we have to sit with our children and describe what's happening to their brains when they've been through an, a traumatic event, when we're asking them to deal with trauma and asking them to be the reason we make change, it is BS. But we can look each other in the face today because Michigan is about to be something amazing. Michigan is going to be a place where we have a tragic event and we do something within eight weeks. We are going to be a place that demonstrates that what's happening over there is the death knell of a movement that has no care and consideration for our children. And we are going to tell the world that as a state where many of us grow up hunting and being sportsmen, where it's part of our tradition, we can protect our children and our Second Amendment rights. There's no damn hypocrisy there. So we stand here at a tipping point. I don't know about you, but after that MSU shooting, how many calls did you get from hunters, from sportsmen, from parents who care, from Oxford parents who carry concealed weapons, who said, please, Congresswoman, protect our babies? That is a tipping point. And we know from polling, but also from our communities, that this is a changed moment. So while these people have their First Amendment right to do whatever they want to do, they represent a deep minority of people. A deep minority of people. So later on today, I'm going to do a big listening session with our Michigan State students, right? And we get to tell them, adults in the audience, we get to tell them that we heard them and we did something. We did something to change the situation. It is not the end, it is the beginning. And in the meantime, to make sure our whole state and all these cameras here, in contrast to our friends over there, are we going to take this sitting down anymore? Let me hear you. Let me hear you. And now, from Michigan's 6th Congressional District, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. Good morning, everybody. I came today to stand in solidarity with my friend Gabby Gifford, the governor, and the state legislatures who have finally found the courage to get this done. I wasn't planning on speaking, and I first want to tell you I'm here because I love Gabby Gifford. John Dingle loved Gabby Gifford. I love her for her strength, her courage, her inspiration, her hope, and her leadership that is getting us to where we are today. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I agree with everything that's been set up here. So I'm going to give you a little personal. I love John Dingle. I miss him every day. John Dingle was a member of the National Rifle Association Board. He was slept with a gun under his pillow every day until he died. And he loved Gabby Gifford. He helped her when she got elected. And right before he died, when I was out here doing something, he said, Deborah, I'm proud of you. Times have changed. You are doing what is right. Yeah. School shootings bring our attention. They're horrific. And I will 
I'm so sick of thought and prayers, I'll never say them again. But I'm one of those kids that hid in the closet. I grabbed a gun from my father and kept him from killing my mother. A gun that was too easily available when people get angry and it gets pulled out and it becomes a weapon of potential death. I was the child that grabbed my brothers and sisters and hid in the closet and said, please God, please God, let us live tonight. And in those days, the police didn't come. They didn't have come help you. Your father was the man on the hill. They didn't believe this happened every day, every place. And my cousin told me I could tell you this story today. Her daughter, early 20s, mental health issues, went to a gun store, learned how to use it, came home, got in the bathtub, shot and killed herself. Guns are too available. You wonder why we need background checks? You know what, wonder why we need Fred flag laws? I spent decades saying, how could I keep a gun out of my father's hands? How could I have kept my cousin's daughter alive? We need common sense gun legislation so people don't deal with this every day. say now it's the kids. People don't listen to us. But the Michigan State Legislature has heard your voices. They have the courage. Gabby Gifford is here to have their back. The governor's going to sign this legislation. Michigan is going to be the leader in the country. We are going to get this done. And now, from the Michigan Education Association, Paula Herbart. Hey, everybody. I'm Paula Herbart. I'm a teacher from Macomb County and the president of the Michigan Education Association. I taught middle school for 20 years, and if you think that shit bothers me, you got that wrong. You got that wrong. You make a plan, you stick to the plan, and you ignore the noise. We cannot keep going on like this. This is not normal. You have a teacher grabbing her chest, bleeding from a gun wound, taking her children to safety. That's not normal and you shouldn't accept it. We shouldn't accept that students murdered at MSU and Uvalde and Oxford, Stoneman Douglas, Sandy Hook, babies, Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech, and Columbine. I was a second year teacher, Columbine. So many others, and it kept going. We allowed it. We allowed it, but enough is enough. We must keep pushing our elected leaders to take meaningful action to protect our children from gun violence. You know what I love best about the MEA? The solidarity. All the staffs here from MEA today supporting gun, anti, you know, gun violence, they're standing right there. They're shutting those people down. They're all this crowd telling them enough is enough. Thank you, MEA. Thank you. We love you. Universal background checks, extreme risk protection laws, safe storage requirements would have kept that baby from shooting his teacher. Right? Come on. He didn't want to do that. These common sense proposals are overwhelmingly supported by the voters. You know why? Because we elected the people that are going to do the job. We elected the people who are going to do the job. There's zero excuses anymore. Zero excuses. 
I refuse to continue to watch innocent children be gunned down by people who shouldn't have a gun. Watching our communities be torn apart. Continue to watch parents lose their children. It's not okay. It is far too late for too many children. Most recently, our three MSU students who should be in class today. And they'll never have that chance. And those families won't have the chance to watch their kids graduate. But the time is not too late to protect everyone else. We can do it. So let's protect them. Let's take action now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please welcome to the podium, Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel. All right, to echo what uh, some of the previous speakers have said, to those uh, who are out here today who are protesting this rally, let me say this, you can make all the noise you want, but you will never silence our voices, and you will never stop us from doing everything we can to protect the health and safety of the public and the good people of the great state of Michigan, am I right? Thank you, Gabby Gifford. Thank you for your tenacity, for your courage, for your determination, for your perseverance, for never giving up and never backing down. And because of you, all of us are here today. And I will say, I have been here on these steps more times than I can count talking about when we're finally going to do something to combat senseless, unnecessary gun violence in this state? And the answer to that question is now, now. So in the four years plus that I've been in office, I've tried to do everything I possibly can as the state's top law enforcement officer to protect the public. I've filed lawsuits, I've signed on to amicus uh, actions, I've written letters, but it's not enough. It is not enough. And I remember talking to a Republican legislator when I got into office and said, what can we do to work together on various issues? What about guns? What about gun safety laws? And I remember him saying to me, well, it's a non-starter on gun safety laws. We're never gonna pass any laws that involve guns. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Being a legislator, being elected and saying, it doesn't matter how many lives are taken. It doesn't matter how many children have to die. We're not gonna do anything about it. It wasn't that we had the wrong policies. We knew what those policies were. We just didn't have the right players, did we? Well, guess what? We do now. The people have spoken. So looking behind me now, let me ask you, wave your hand in the air if you are a common sense gun safety legislator in, this, in the state of Michigan. Wave your hand. And now wave your hand if you are also in the majority. All right. And, and wave your hand in the air if you are a common sense gun safety governor of the state of Michigan. She's right there and she's ready to sign. So let me say this, as these bills proceed forward to all of the legislators behind me, you have my support. I'm gonna do everything I can to assist you. And once you pass those laws, I'll do everything I can around the state of Michigan to educate people on these new laws. I will do everything in my power to enforce these laws and I will do everything in my power to defend these laws once they're passed. So what do we want? We want action, right? What do we want? Action. When do we want it? Now. Or like 
in the next two to four weeks, like roughly. Is that good? So thank you to everybody who's been fighting for so hard, for so long, to finally see progress. We are going to have it in short order. Gabby Giffords never back down, and neither do we here in the state of Michigan. Let's get it done. Thanks, everybody. And now, from the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan, Bishop Bonnie Perry. My name's Bonnie Perry, and I am the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan, and I speak for all of the bishops of Michigan and our sub-200 communities of faith. We support sensible gun bills that will soon be voted on and passed in the House and Senate. My Lutheran bishop colleagues support these. My Methodist bishop colleagues support these. The Catholic Conference supports them, as does the Baptist pastors of Detroit and our siblings in the Jewish Community Relations Council. Friends, I cannot remember another time when we all agreed on anything. This matters. I was chatting with members of the legislature, with reps and senators who were lamenting the evil of the world and the fallen nature of humanity and pointing out that these bills would not solve the problems. And I agree, we live in a world with tremendous despair and pain and brokenness, fear and sin. But I believe that people of goodwill and people of faith are called to do more. We do not have to just drop our shoulders and say, I am so sorry for your loss. We can do more. As a Christian, God demands that I do more. I worship a God who came into this world and said, I am resurrection and I am life. And resurrection means there is always something more. We can do more bit by bit. Sensible change. Mandatory seatbelts didn't end automobile accidents, but it decreased fatalities and sensible gun laws can do the same. I envision a world changed. A world where our where gun deaths in our cities are not a silent, poverty-fueled plague of death. I envision a world where the help of medical professionals and police can intercede before an extremely troubled person alters their situation with a gun. I envision a world where I do not have to give pastoral care to a priest who is about to bury two out of three triplets because they were shot and killed. I envision a world where I do not have to say to one of my colleagues on my staff, stay home from work today. I know your son was at MSU and I know how hard this is. Be with your family. Friends, we can do more. Yes, we I envision a world where the greatest cause for concern when our, when our young people go into a classroom is they're trying to figure out the square root of the hypotenuse and not the angles that they need to figure out to hide if an active shooter walks in. We can do more, we must do more, and I envision a world where our lawmakers, Republicans and Democrats alike, have the political courage and common decency to vote yes to sensible gun laws. We can do more, and if we do not, that's a sin. We can do more. Yeah. 
and we will. Please welcome back to the podium, Jonathan Gold. Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords has become known around the world for her story of hope, resilience, and strength in the wake of tragedy. The youngest woman ever elected to the Arizona State Senate, Gabrielle Giffords represented her community in the Arizona legislature, where she served for several years before winning election to the U.S. House of Representatives in 2006. On January 8, 2011, Gabby was shot in the head while meeting with constituents in her hometown of Tucson, Arizona. The shooter killed six people and injured 13 others. After months in intensive care, Gabby embarked on a courageous rehabilitation journey in the public spotlight. She worked to win back some of the mobility and speech that had been taken away by gunfire. After resigning from Congress to focus on her recovery, in January of 2013, just weeks after the tragedy at Sandy Hook Elementary School, Congresswoman Giffords founded the gun safety group Giffords and quickly became a leader in the movement to strengthen our nation's gun laws. So now, please join me in welcoming someone using her second chance at service to make our community safer from gun violence. Someone who has worked incredibly hard so that she could use her voice and say that she too is part of the fight to save lives from gun violence. My hero, former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. can change so quickly. Mine did when I was shot. But I never gave up hope. I chose to make a new start, to move ahead, to not look back. I'm relearning so many things, how to walk, how to talk, and I'm fighting to make the country safer. It can be so difficult. Losses hurt, sets back are hard, but I tell myself, move ahead. I'm finding joy in small things, ride my bike, playing the French horn, going to the gym, laughing with friends, the small things add up. We are living in challenging time. We are up for the challenge. My own recovery has taken years. Many, many people have helped me along the way, and I learned so much. I learned when people care for each other and work together, progress is possible, the world is possible. But change doesn't happen overnight. I can't do it alone. Join me. Let's move ahead together. Amen. Thank you, Gabby, for those incredibly powerful words. What a great day. Days like today only happen when advocates use their voices to demand change and when our elected leaders follow through on their commitments. 
This gun safety legislation must be passed and on the governor's desk for signature. Now, everyone, I know it's cold, but I want you to do me one more favor. I want you to take out your phones and text the word COURAGE to 34131 to sign up for our action network. Again, that's COURAGE to 34131. We will text you updates about the bills, how you can take action. Again, this is only the beginning of our journey. And I look forward to working with all of you as we continue to make Michigan a safer place. Thank you all for being here today.